What's up guys, in this video we're going to be reviewing Rabi Wallet. So I've been using MetaMask for a long, long time, probably like two and a half years. And lately I've been just checking a few other options to see what we have out there. So just in this video, I'm going to show you all the features. And after that, you can choose if you want to switch to Rabi. So here we are on the website. Of course, it works just like MetaMask. You need to download the Chrome extension. And once you have it, you can start using it. So some of the features here, you can see how it looks. And so, for example, it is multi-chain, which is something that I really, really like, which means that you don't need to add the chain manually, which is great. So that means if you are on something that is using, let's say, Arbitrum, you don't need to switch to Arbitrum. If you switch to Optimism within the, um, the project that you're using, you don't need to switch on Rabi because it will switch automatically for you, which is great. So that means you don't need to add it manually. And also it has a pre-signed check for security. And also you can see exactly what is about to happen within your wallet. And it also has some other features that I'm going to be showing you. So let me go ahead and pull it up. So number one, we have the wallet right here. This is one of the wallets that I use to farm some projects. So you can see it has $713. If we click here, we can refresh. It is up 4%. We can also check um, all my assets. So I have $465 on Arbitrum, $221 on Polygon, and $7 on Avalanche. And I also have some others. So for example, $5 on Zora and many other small amounts on some other chains. Um, also, we can unfold to just check it out to see all the other funds that I have on all the other networks. So next, we have swapping, which is pretty basic, just swapping from um, one token to the other. So I can just select here and I have many, many options here. Next, let's go back. So you can also, of course, switch to any other. So as you can see, we have Polygon. So as you can see, um, it is not like MetaMask that you need to switch on um, the, the network. Next, we have Send, which is great because there is something that I really like is that if you if you don't have the, the, the address whitelisted within your wallet, you will have to add a, your password every single time that you're going to be sending some funds, which is great. So I do think this is pretty good for security. Next, we have receive, which is, of course, pretty basic. That means if you want to receive some funds. And next, we have NFTs, which is something that I do think they did way better than MetaMask because on MetaMask, I haven't been able to see any of my NFTs. They never pop up, but here they can actually pop up. And I also have the option to click here and then they can um, pull up automatically or quicker if I click on the star. So that is pretty great. Next, we have transactions. So I can see, of course, all my transactions, um, which is also great. And I do think it actually pulls up way more transactions than MetaMask. So here we also have some scams transactions. So it, all, it is also um, showing off all those transactions, which is great. Um, obviously, I am not the one taking those scam transactions. I'm just receiving them, which is just some fake NFTs. Then we have um, gas pop up, top up, I'm sorry, um, which is great on one hand, which is so, for example, let's say I'm using Avalanche and I don't have enough AVAX to take a transaction. I can just come here click $20, I click continue, and then it will ask me where I want to select those funds. So for example, I have $50 worth of ETH on Arbitrum, I can just select that, and I'm gonna be paying for it, which has a $4 service fee. The only thing is that if I am bridging some funds, basically this is what I'm doing here, I would just rather use a bridge like Orbiter, like Clefi, or a cross-chain project like OmniBTC, and at the same time farm it. So even though I do think it is a pretty good feature, but just for me, since I am always farming some projects, I would just I would just rather just use a uh, project that is tokenless, a bridge that is tokenless, but it is pretty good to have it here. Then we have approvals, which is, to be honest, um, the thing that I really, really like here is that, let's say, for example, I got involved with this smart contract one year ago. I can just come here and revoke that um, access or approval. So basically, that smart contract will not have the option to get involved with my wallet anymore, which is great. Super, super great. I can, of course, change the, the gas speed so it can be standard, it can be fast, instant. I can also add custom or I can also set it up here and change anything that I need to do. Once I am done, I can come here and sign and submit, 
which is super, super good. So for this one, I do think it is pretty interesting to use. So let's say I get involved with a project that is a scam or I do think it might be a scam. I can just come here quickly and then revoke the the access or the approval. They also have the option by assets, which is also great. So let's go ahead and remove that. And let's pop it up again and let's see what else we have here. Um, we see approvals, feedbacks, simple, just sending some messages so we can check directly with them or proposals. And we also have more. Number one, you can claim a Rabi badge on DBank and you can also request some dbank testnet gas token which is also a video that i will be making in the future because they're launching their own uh, network which we might receive in our job if we get involved with it then we have locking wallet which is obviously just locking our wallet signature record which is empty um, next let's see what else we have we have manage addresses so i have one here which i added with my seed phrase then another one with my private key of course you're not seeing anything interesting here this is just my wallet address nothing very important so here you can just come here and add your wallet addresses that you want to add next we have um, connected dApps there's obviously nothing then we have the option that i mentioned before which is enabling whitelist for sending assets so whenever if i remove it i will not have to add a um, address to the whitelist or add also my password but i do think it is pretty important to leave it as it is enabled then we have enabled testnet so let me go ahead and show you how it works once i click here and I come here, it actually gives me the option to check all the testnet they have available. So I don't need to come here and add it manually. It also shows me um, all my assets on those testnets. So that is super, super great. And they have many, many, many testnets. Next, we have custom RBC, which is something that once you add it, it should be a little bit harder for some projects to track your IP. So I do think this is a video that I should be making in the future. Next, we have current languages. We have English. We have, to be honest, I don't know what this is. Little House, Brick. I don't know what this is. Spanish, which is I do speak Spanish, Espanol. Then we have Francais, which I also speak French. Then I don't know what this is, to be honest. I guess this is Turkey. Portuguese then I don't know why what this is also so you got a few options here for languages then let's see what else we have other than languages uh, MetaMask preferred dApps so if we check this out the following dApps will remain connected through MetaMask regardless regardless of the wallet you flip to you can also click here and add the application and lastly we have um Auto lock time, which is great because you can come here and select like seven days, one day, four hours, one hour, 10 minutes. Unfortunately, they don't have the custom, but it is pretty good still. I always have mine on never. Then we have clear pending. So sometimes you might take a transaction and it stays on pending. So that is a pretty good option. So you can go ahead and remove those pendings and current version supported chains. And as you can see, they have 66 main nets and 45 test nets. So to be honest, it is pretty, pretty interesting. The only thing is once you start using MetaMask and you have been using it for a long time, it is kind of hard to do the switch to Rabi, to be honest, but I do think it is worth it. If you want to check it out, go ahead to Rabi.io and see how it works for you. Um, also, one quick tip is that once you down download it and you also have the MetaMask, you will need to come here and click flip. So for example, right now I can use MetaMask and now I can use Rabi. So it will basically just ban one of them so you don't get a double confirmation whenever you're taking a transaction. Other than that, that's it. There is really nothing else to do on the wallet and obviously locking your wallet. And there you go. This is a quick review of Rabi. So let me know in the comment section if you do use Rabi, if you have been using it, if you have used it before, and let me know also if you are using any other wallet. As always, thank you for watching. And if you find this content valuable, please share it to the friend. Subscribe. Happy, happy day or farming. I don't know. Bye-bye.